Okay, so in this video, what we're going to go over is how to get your Starlink connection to communicate with other buildings on your property. Um, I have spent months working on this project and I finally found a good solution. I played around with some TP Link um, outdoor, I guess, access points. I spent probably three to $500 playing around with um, several different access points. And then I heard that there was more hardware I needed to buy. And then it just got a little overly complicated. A lot of things failed, um, you know, a lot of troubleshooting and whatnot. And I finally found something that's very affordable that can shoot this, this Wi-Fi over to different locations uh, for about $150 around there. Um, at most $200. It just depends on how complicated you make the setup on your end. If you're trying to make it somewhat decorative. Anyway, so in this, uh, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible and straightforward. Um, and I'll include all the links in the description on what I used and how I have it set up. Um, but basically this is what I'm doing. I have Starlink at site A, this is my house. Uh, start, uh, the dish is on the roof, the router is in my kitchen up on my cabinets, and I have a number of things hooked up to it. Uh, this is the transmitter. Uh, the transmitter and receiver usually come in a kit, so I'll include a link in the description for those. Um, they they include a transmitter receiver, like two dishes, uh, as well as a, it's like this little power brick where you can plug in two ports for an Ethernet cable, or two of them, uh, for each individual dish. So you have two power bricks, um, and then two ports for each power brick. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, the transmitter, if it's programmed properly, will... Uh, it says it can handle up to about six miles to share the Wi-Fi to the receiver. Uh, and I believe with clear line of sight, which in most cases, when, you know, once you start traveling quite a bit, you know, to site A to I, site B, there's going to be different things like trees and buildings and just different things that are going to be in the way. So I, I don't recommend pushing it to six miles, but it, you know, if you keep it within a mile, I, I can almost guarantee this will work. Um, but you know, it, it's worth testing. Maybe at your location, maybe you can get three to four miles easily. It just depends on the setup. But for me, uh, from this house to this house on the property, uh, it's about a thousand feet. And, um, and it's been working great. Like, uh, Starlink, you know, it can range from, I think it's 60, uh, megabits per second to 150 megabits per second around there. Um, and then when I hooked these up, I did a speed test with just this, tiny router, uh, once I hooked up to the Wi-Fi over at this location, even a thousand feet away, I was still getting about 60 to 70 megabits per second, which is awesome. Um, you know, with some of the previous tests that I've done on other products, I was barely getting five to 10 megabits per second. Uh, and this was a huge upgrade, even though I spent less. So anyway, uh, that's basically what I'm trying to do. There's a, a small router that works as an access point to allow other devices at the, the, the other location to hook up to that router. Uh, for example, phones, iPads, computers, whatever it is, I'll show you how to set that up. Another thing to mention is you're going to need a number of different connections. Um, Starlink, and, and forgive my messy setup, uh, at this point I was just trying to get it working and not necessarily make it look clean. Um, so eventually this is going to look clean. But you've got the router um, at my house that you know that it's bringing in the internet from a satellite. And then what I did was uh, I bought a, a Starlink Ethernet cable, which you're going to have to order from Starlink's shop. Uh, I think it was 20 to 30 bucks. So once you have that, you plug in an Ethernet cable that goes from this to here. Um, and then the, the secondary Ethernet cable goes into your computer to allow you to program the device to function properly. Because you can actually do much more complicated setups where you have multiple of these like working working together. Uh, but for this, it's just going to be two devices working with each other. So uh, here's another view of what we were doing. Um, I have the Starlink dish aiming up towards the satellites. And then I have the, um, I guess, device A, site A dish hooked up right below that, aiming towards the house um, down here in the picture. And... You'll notice there's even a few trees that are kind of in the way, and I'm still getting an excellent signal from that location. 
Um, honestly, setting the, this part up is fairly easy. You just have a hose clamp, you hook it up to a pole or whatever on your house and point it in the right direction and then you're good. That part's easy. I don't have to show you how to set that up. But the complicated part is the programming, which we're gonna be going over uh, in this next part. All right, so in this video, what we're gonna be doing is taking the f site A, where you have the transmitter, the, the antenna that's pointing over towards the receiver. We need to first get that device programmed properly so that it can communicate with the secondary device. So uh, we're gonna start with first, make sure that you have, um, you're gonna to need to plug in the ethernet cable from the power brick that's powering the, um, the transmitter, the, the antenna, the light beam M5. So the order it would go in is the antenna to the power brick and the power brick to the, uh, the computer. Now, a lot of computers, some of the newer ones nowadays, don't have an ethernet port. So you might have to buy an adapter to get that to be compatible. I'm gonna plug in my adapter now. I have a MacBook. Um, and this is not gonna be the exact same setup I went through, but I'm, I'm kind of kind of going over some of the basics on the programming I did on the back end, so you can match that or make it similar. And that way you can get it set up on your end. And let's say you have another building across the property you need Wi-Fi to, hopefully this helps. Anyway, I plugged in the ethernet adapter and the next step is we're gonna hit launch pad, system preferences, network, and this is the adapter I plugged in. Now, if the ethernet is hooked up, it might say connected. Um, in, in this video, uh, since this is just a demonstration, I'm just gonna show you the steps. Doesn't necessarily need to show as connected right now because uh, I already have the devices hooked up. Um, and working properly and I don't want to disable everything just to demonstrate in this video. Anyway, um, showing it's not connected, uh, but in your on your side it would probably show connected. Uh, we're, we need to change the configure IPv4. The default is DHCP. You need to change that to manual. And you're going to put in a new IP address. Now, I'm going to put in 192. Um, 168. One and two zero. That's the default to give you access to the settings. And I believe you can select apply at this point. Okay. Um, normally on Windows, if you select this area, it like auto fills with some other information. I'm going to assume that this already auto fills when I hit apply. Um, if not, in the edit, I'll make sure to include the numbers. But anyway, yeah. Uh, go ahead and go to your browser and just put in 192-168-1-20. Select advanced, then proceed. Use the default password, which is UBNT for the username and password. Enter the country and language and log in. Log in name with the same info. Select system, and then change the device name to whatever is appropriate for the location. For example, I might say something like Starlink Site A. Select change, and then update your password. Select change, and then apply. Remember that whenever you make any changes, you'll have to select change and then apply. Uh, it's not just one button that you're working with. It's kind of a sequence of buttons to make sure that everything's been saved on that page. Go to wireless, change wireless mode to access point. Change the SSID. This is the username to log back into the software in case you need to make future adjustments. Change security to WPA2-AES. Then type in your password. Select change and then apply. Go to network and make sure the network mode is showing bridge. Uh, go ahead and change the last few digits to the IP address to something random. For example, instead of the two zero at the end, like we did originally, uh, you can just make it a one. Select change and then apply. Occasionally, if the page locks up, try refreshing the page by re-entering the IP at the top. Uh, just remember that when you change the IP with the one, 
you're going to need to re-enter that same sequence of numbers for the new IP address so you can log into that area again. Okay, so now it's time to work with the second device at the other location. So let's go ahead and just make sure that you bring the computer over to the other location, hook up the Ethernet cable from that second device into your computer, kind of like what we did with the first area, uh, the first location. And since we're working with a new device, just realize that the default IP will be back to what it was before with the two zero at the end. So once it's plugged into your computer, make sure you go through the settings, kind of like what we did on the network and take it into static mode. Uh, so basically it's just here. Uh, basically you would just select the ethernet area. You'd select uh, the configure IPv4 and then uh, change it from DHCP to manual, kind of like what you did with the first device. And then hit apply. Um, and then let's go ahead and go back to the browser, enter in the IP address, uh, select advanced and then proceed, enter the default login info, select wireless, select wireless mode to station, select network, and change the IP address to something random, kind of like what we did before. Um, maybe this time for this IP address, you add a two at the end. Select change and then enter your password for your device, a new one. Uh, I, I just matched the one I used at the other location. Technically that's still new. Select change and then apply. Enter the new IP address in the browser. Select advanced and then proceed. Log in. Select system, and then change the device name to whatever is appropriate for the second location. Select change, and then apply. Select wireless, and then select the button next to SSID. This is when it starts to search for the first device so that it can properly communicate with each other. Um, once you've selected the first device, and then select lock AP. Enter the new password under WPA pre-share key. Select change and then apply. Now go back to your network settings. Select ethernet and then advanced. Uh, change the configure IPv4 back to DHCP and then select okay. All right, so here's site A where Starlink is hooked up. And there is a second location off in the distance, about a thousand feet away, where the second antenna is hooked up. Let me head over there and I'll show you what it looks like. And here is the second antenna right there. And that's aiming back at my house, which is, which you can't see right now, but if you were on the roof, you'd be able to see the house. You'll notice that I have a wire coming down and it goes through the wall and then i'll go inside and show you the router okay sorry for the mess back here but you'll notice um we got the wire coming in through the wall it comes up here into the power brick similar to what i showed you earlier so it's plugged in right here the green one and the black one goes into this little router and that will be in the description of which router i'm using um so yeah so what I'll do is I'll connect my laptop to the router. When you plug it in, it will show up as a new network. Just connect to that network. Um, usually there's a password on the bottom, uh, default password. Just log into that network, and then I will show you which IP address to uh, pull up on the browser so you can turn this into an access point. Let's go ahead and make the, your router into an access point. So first of all, make sure you're connected to the router and then put in the IP address. And then, now remember the IP address usually is shown on the router somewhere, or maybe on the manual. Just pull that up to access the settings. Uh, we'll give it a random password. And we're logged into the settings for the router. So now what I'm gonna do is before we make it an access point, we wanna set this up to where uh, we can recognize the Wi-Fi network. So first, I'm going to select the wireless. 
and then you'll notice they have 5G and then also this. I'm just going to go with the standard. I'm going to turn this off. Sometimes not everything's uh, compatible with 5G. So Oh, okay. I, uh, that was already off. Anyway, um, let's modify this. I'm going to change the network name to um, Home Wi-Fi. And the password, you can make it whatever you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply. So that's saving that information. Now, once you've made all the changes that you want on this account, then go and make the change to make it an access point. Because I noticed that when I use this router uh, and I use this IP address, and then if I don't make all the changes I want and make it an access point, uh, for whatever reason, I'm not able to reconnect to the settings again. Now, I'm sure someone else out there might know how to, but I think it changes the IP address and I wasn't sure where to find that. Anyway, uh, just make the changes that you need. Then go down to more settings, select network mode, oh I might have to go back into the IP, oh okay so when you change the name it needs to update here so give it a second to update, there it is, home Wi-Fi, put in the password, Okay, and then re-enter into the settings. And you'll notice it changed the name. So you it's more settings. Network mode. Access point. Apply. Uh, you need to plug in the Ethernet cable, so let me go ahead and do that. Give me a second. And remember, this is the Ethernet cable coming from uh, the antenna that's on the roof. So that cable goes down into the, uh, the power brick, and then an antenna goes from the power brick into your Wi-Fi router. So I'm plugging it in now. Okay, that's plugged in. I hit apply. And then I'm most likely going to lose access to this page, which means it's just resetting the the way the, the router performs. It's no longer working as a normal router, it's an access point. So that means other devices can connect to it wirelessly. Can you access you must connect using the IP if obtained from the main router to get the IP. Check the connected clients list in your main router's UI. Okay, so that's how you reaccess the settings. Select close. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll test the internet. And there we go. It's working. Let's do a speed test. Perfect. There you go. That's how you set that up. Have fun. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments section, because um, I'm sure you know everyone's going to have their unique setup for whatever routers they buy. And like I said, I'll have all the uh, product links in the description if you just want to match this exact setup, because with what I have right now, it works great. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is if you have a big house, the small router that I have is not going to always reach all the way across the house, so you might need a uh, extender.